Hi mates everyone. Um, I know it's been a while since I did a video, but I'm hopefully back on a more permanent basis. Uh, life has been kind of crazy over the last year and um, making videos just kind of went to the wayside. So my husband um, was in an accident and he broke his pelvis in two different spots and did a bunch of other damage. and. Um, it took a long time for him to heal, then we caught COVID, and then um, I started working a full-time job, and things just have kind of compiled, and I just don't have much time for anything. But I have recently switched to a different job where I'm only working part-time, and it is um, Monday through Wednesday, so I'll have a lot more time to be able to do the things that I love, which is making videos. Um, so I have, I thought the best way to come back would be with a haul. So um, I have a witchy haul today and um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my other setup so you can see everything up close. Okay, so I have a bit of a new setup here. Um, hopefully it's a little bit better. I do think that maybe the lighting's a little dark, so I may have to do something about that. I'm not quite sure why. But I've kind of created a little light box here. Um, you'll probably have seen it in the previous clip um, sitting off to the side. But I thought it might work a little bit better because I rearranged my craft room out here. And um, I was hoping that this would be a little bit better. But we'll have to see how the lighting does. It looks a little dark, but it may not be as dark when I edit it. So um, this haul is like over the last several months. Um, it's just things I've acquired... Um, you know, over uh, the, la the last several months, and um, I wanted to go ahead. And okay, so I think I'll start off with more of the like crafty style stuff um, that I purchased to make like witchcraft style crafts, and those are going to be future videos, um, but I did need supplies for that. So, one is these, this bag of corn husks. And um, it's just, you know, your standard bag of corn husks. You can buy them in, like, the grocery aisle of any store. Um, they're usually in the Hispanic food section. But this is for corn dollies. So I've never made a corn dolly, and I want to um, uh, make a video on making one. And um, I purchased this for that reason. And I think they're just really cute. So, um, and... They're also used, you know, in a like a poppet form, so that is going to be my purpose of having one. Um, but I went ahead and bought these. So the next thing is um, these different types of feathers. I have some pink ostrich feathers here. Um, I just have some random little colored feathers. These ones I found at Walmart, and these are going to be for different um, different things. Like the the pink ones are going to be for a um, cleansing fan that I'm going to be working on and I will be doing a video on and pink is my favorite color so that's why they're pink. Um, I got these ones for witches ladders. Um, I just found them at Walmart. They were the only ones that Walmart had. Um, I don't even think it says what type of bird it comes from but um, I'm assuming there's some sort of goose feather or um, some, you know, pheasant feather or something like that. So I got several different kinds of feathers. Um, like I said, these will be videos coming up. Um, I got these like pendants. So this is just a big bag of pinnacle pendants. Um, they're in a silver color. So I think it was a bag of 100, and I like putting these on my spell jars and also um, like the little crafts, like I'll add them to the fan and my witch's ladders and stuff like that. And then I also got these um, as well. I don't recall how many of these were, but it's just a tree of life with a um, triple moon pinnacle in it. Um, the tree of life is a um, huge symbol in my practice so I've always been drawn to that so some of the next things are these 
um, they're like wreath rings from the Dollar Tree. Um, but I wanted to make some of those hanging uh, pentacles that are made out of, you know, different um, fabrics and um, you normally either have beads or feathers hanging from them. But um, I found these. This was a two pack and it was, you know, the smaller size. My store hasn't had any of that. And then this one is an actual circle. Um, so I thought that that might be, you know, something to, I'm in the process of hanging a bunch of, um, like protective things that are decorative outside on my front patio. Um, so this was my thought for buying those. Um, I also got this little terrarium planter. I thought, you know, it might be nice for like a witch's ball, um, an open witch's ball. I'm, I don't know quite know what I'm going to do with it, but I grabbed it anyway. I have two of these bags of shells. These are also from Dollar Tree. Um, it just says it's a six ounce, so I don't know how many is there, but these ones are all white. And then these ones are kind of the natural multicolored ones. And I intend to make wind chimes out of these. Um, so, you know, also to hang on my patio, um, bringing in the element of water and air together um, with a, you know, set of wind chimes. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that, but that is my thought. So I have a couple bags of these and these are to decorate the, the round wreaths for the pinnacles. So I got um, two bags of purple and two bags of pink. Um, I got a set of these glass gems, so just the glass, uh, round glass things that you use to decorate like uh, bases of flowers and stuff like that. But my purpose is I'm going to be doing a video on how to turn these simple little things into your own rune set. Uh, my daughter has been wanting a rune set, so I thought this might be a fun craft to do for her, and she seemed pretty, you know, excited about that. Um, I also grabbed this metallic uh, it's just deco art paint. It is for the runes. I have recently got um, some markers since then. I will show you in just a second that are metallic. So I'm, which are these? So these are just the craft square uh, metallic markers at Dollar Tree. Um, I've already taken them out of the package. I got like a rose gold, a, a gold, kind of like a, uh, just a lighter gold, rose gold, and then a blue. And then I also found this craft decor chalk, uh, it's like a chalk pen, which I thought would be really great to enchant for um, chalk spells. Um, so I have a video coming up on that as well. Um, I had my husband pick me up these. We have a like ag supply store, but it's not ag supply. It's a different um, like farming supply store and they have they sell horseshoes um they're for really cheap so I had my husband pick me up two of these these sizes and these are going to go for like a um wind chime hanging type of decoration that's going to go outside of course the horseshoe is great for luck and bringing luck in um to your home so, um, I have a couple different styles, or, you know, a couple different sizes that I can choose from. Um, I did plan on making several different ones to hang around the house. Um, uh, so that's what that's for. And how I do these is you'll hang beads and feathers from, um, these little holes that, where the nails go in. I don't know if you can see that, but there's, there's, uh, holes in it. And then you, you know, create a hanger to um, hang it up and then you can have you know long uh, beads and you know, long strings with beads and feathers hanging from them and it'll bring that you know become a little luck charm okay and then the last crafty thing that I have 
unless I come across something else, um, are these bells. So, you know, bells are great for warding off negativity and unwanted spirits and stuff like that. Okay, open that. So they're not very big. They're just like little half inch bells and they're not real loud either. I don't know if you can hear that, but um, I thought that would be perfect to add to some of these um, crafts that I'm doing, especially like the outside wind chimes and stuff like that. Um, and my husband wanted um, some bells as well to hang on his bike. He just bought a new, mar well, a new to him motorcycle and he has been putting some protection um, items on it so bells were one of those things that would you know be for protection and you know just warding off negativity and unwanted things um, so there's that I did get a couple things you know a couple crystals from a vendor show that they had here locally um, I'm not even sure that you can see that, but um, she, there's this one lady, she has, um, she attends these vendor shows and she does nothing but crystals. Um, so we've purchased quite a few things from her. I just brought out a couple. Um, one is a selenite wand. I think it's probably about three or four inches. Um, selenite's one of my favorite stones, so um, I had to get that. And then this is a very cool looking... Uh, clear quartz point. Um, it's like a cluster because it has several different points off of it and I just like it and that sits on my altar. And then tiger's eye is another one of my favorite stones and this is a tiger's eye point and it's it's a good maybe two and a half, three inches, something like that. And it's really nice so I thought I would go ahead and share that with you. I did pick up a couple things at the thrift store and I thought they were just really cute. So one of them is this little heart. It's like a glass heart dish. Um, I thought it would be really good for like offering bowls or um, to do some sort of spell work in. And then the other one is this little dish. Um, it reminds me of like a champion cup type of thing. I'm sure it was made, you know, for like dessert dishes or something like that but there was only one of them so I grabbed it I just thought it was cute and it I just was thinking you know that's a great offering dish um, or you know a spell dish or whatever I wanted to do with it so I did grab those and they were only like 10 cents a piece okay so I am in the process of um, opening my own my new store and I got these um, on Amazon. It's a rune set. Um, I want to say it was Labradorite. If I remember right, I'll have to look it up, but I don't remember what it is. Um, it's been a little while since I purchased these, but they're not, they're not what I had hoped they were, so I probably won't be selling these. Um, I may ask my daughter if she wants them because they're just not very good quality. Uh, so that's that and it did come in this little weird burlap bag um, so always be wary of what you purchase on Amazon and other places because it's not always the greatest quality okay so I have several new decks um, and the decks I have had for a little while. Some of them even go back to Christmas. Um, but I thought I would go ahead and share with them you with them because I have not shown you yet what at these ones. This one's called Gothic Tarot. Um, and I did get this for Christmas. And when I I always cut the box up and just put like the if the box won't fit in the bag that I've created for it, then I'll cut all the edges off of it. But normally I'm just um, we'll only cut the flaps off and just fold the box over, but um, with this one I didn't. I just cut it off, but it is by um, Ann Stokes. 
It's Gothic Tarot, and all of the pictures for this showed dragon cards, and I thought that I was buying a dragon deck. I did get this for Christmas, but I had picked it out, and my husband purchased it. Um, but it's not what I thought it was. I mean, it's still a nice deck, um, even though it's a little darker than I had hoped it was going to be. I ho had hoped it was going to be a dragon deck. So this is what the back looks like. Um, and then it is a pip deck. And I've used this, so it's out of order. So um, one thing I hate about this is... It normally doesn't bother me, but on this one it does. Because it has the Nine of Pentacles, and then it has it in all these other languages. It's just distracting. And so that's what the pinnacles look like, their skulls. This is what the wands look like. So more skulls. And I don't know. It's just a lot darker than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be full of dragons. And there's only a few dragons in here. So... I won't go through all of them. If I will probably do a, a walkthrough of these or of this deck eventually, but um, it's just not what I thought. I still have use. I still use it. It's just not one that I'm drawn to using all the time. And I make these little bags myself, so. Okay, and then this is the next one. And I was really excited to get this one. Um, I did pick it up at a vendor show. It, for, not from the same lady that has the crystals, but a different girl that does crystals in my area. Um, so it's the Nightmare Before Christmas um, tarot deck. And this is what I normally do. I just cut the flaps off and then fold it over and then I just stuff it in the bag with it. That way, you know, I kind of have what it, you know, the original box that it came in, even though it's not a functional box. So this is what the backs look like. And it's another pip deck. Um, so I'll just quickly kind of go through some of them. One a jack. So it's just a fun little deck. Um, I will be doing a walkthrough of this one as well eventually. But I thought this would be a great one for like Halloween readings. You know, because Jack Skellington to me is Halloween, not Christmas. So, but I suppose it could be either. But this is the bag that I made for it. I figured it had to have some neon yarn, and I had this really cool neon yarn in my stash. Okay. Okay, so this was another one that I got for Christmas, and it's Witch's Tarot, and it's the holographic one. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, I think you can. So, um, that's what the back of that one looks like. It's got a really beautiful back in it. Um, this is more of the cheaper deck. Um, and I, I didn't pay a whole, or I didn't, it wasn't a whole lot when we bought it. My husband pay, purchased it for Christmas for me, but um, I think it was like less than $10. But 
it's cool. It's just not the greatest quality and, you know, the printing's not the greatest. But it is a nice deck, standard deck. Um, so you have the holographic. It, um, it is like a pip deck, but it does have... No, I guess it's a normal deck. Sorry. The imagery is nice. The holographic really kind of throws me off because the, the printing behind it is not very pronounced. But, um, you know, it is what it is. So I have two Oracle decks. This is Dragon Wisdom. Um, I love the cards. The guidebook sucks. Um, it's really hard to get um, do it for a reading because the the things that it gives you as um, as your like little uh, reading what the card means it doesn't really give you a whole lot of information but the cards themselves are beautiful so you have independence intuition oops, prayer divine order and they're just the cards are gorgeous the guidebooks just stinks. Um, I don't get a whole lot of, well, I don't get any information off of the, the guidebook itself on what, you know, an Oracle card is supposed to kind of answer your questions or whatever you're trying to get the information from. It normally will give you some sort of, um, something, but this one just kind of gives a story of the dragon and the characteristics of the dragon. Um, but it just, it's not for me. But I am going to keep the deck and I am going to write my own meetings for each one because they have the, the word here. So you know that this card is for courage and I'm just going to write my own meaning of courage. Um, but it's a beautiful deck. I love dragons, and this was the first dragon deck I was able to find, and um, I was a little disappointed. I was hoping it would have more guidance in the the guidebook than, you know, just a story about the card. Um, so it's called Earth Wisdom, and I love this one. Um, it has. A really nice guidebook in it that gives you, you know, um, it gives you the planet, uh, a, a stone that's associated with it, and then it gives you its little meaning, and it gives you like a um, affirmation to say uh, with the card, which I find really nice. Um, so this is what the back looks like tree of life with you know your Celtic knot in it um, it's really nice so this has a Celtic base to it um, so it has your little uh, like word that goes along with the image so this boundaries relief it's just really beautiful and I've gotten really good results off of this this Oracle deck so as with all of the the decks that I've shown, I'll go in a more detailed, uh, like walkthrough of it, um, in a different video. It's a beautiful Stonehenge. So definitely recommend this one if you have not, if you don't have it yet, and you're into like the Celtic pantheon and all of that. It's really beautiful. Um, and it has a really great guidebook with it. Okay, so the last two decks I have are card decks. Um, 
like playing card decks. And I'm going to be using these for Cardomancy. Um, I got this one the first time for Christmas. My husband purchased it for me. I am a huge Harry Potter fan. Um, always will be. Um, so we found this and it is just your standard playing card deck. Um, this is what the cover looks like. And then you have just little images on the cards that have to go with the movie. Um, I've found that I'm having a hard time connecting to this deck. I think I need to cleanse it and start start again. Um, but they just have little clips from the movie. And I think this is from Sorcerer's Stone, so the first one. Um, but they're really nice. There's Hedwig. Um, so I was quite pleased with that. But like I said, I am having trouble connecting to this deck. I just can't get a good reading off of it. I don't know why. Um, but I think it just needs a good cleansing and maybe start again. And then this one I've purchased recently. This is the, my newest deck. It is gorgeous. It's metallic. Um, it is in the Hufflepuff color because I am a Hufflepuff and um, which is, you know, yellow. Uh, but this is the gold one. There are four decks and they are the color of the houses. So um, if depending on what house you buy will depend on what your deck looks like. But mine is the Hufflepuff one so it is like a yellow golden color. But it's really pretty. And then the backs of the cards um, look like this. So this is what the back looks like. Um, it has like the animals for all the houses on it. So you have a lion, you have the snake, you have the badger, you have the raven, um, you have like the little uh, diadem um, and other little things that are in it. And then the cards themselves look like this, which I love. It's like a um, like an etch, etching. So that's what the Joker looks like, Hagrid. The other Joker's Dobby, and it it is like a uh, normal card deck. You only have pictures on certain ones, um, just the court cards. The court cards have, you know, most of the main characters. So you have Neville, you have Luna, Snape, and these are what the red, the red look like. So you have Sirius, McGonagall, Dumbledore, Voldemort. Bellatrix, Draco, and then the black looks like that. And you have Harry, Hermione, Ron, and then the reds look like that. So I think this will be really nice. I have not um, actually tried to do a reading with this yet because I just haven't had time, but um, I'm really eager to. And I am just learning card cardamancy, so um, it's not like I have a guidebook I can just go to. I do have like a little print off of the standard things that I've kind of accumulated, but um, I thought this would be really nice. It's right up my alley. It's something that I enjoy, and um, I couldn't resist it. I want to buy all of them, even though they're all card decks. They're all going to be the same, but they're different, you know, colors for the different houses. Okay, so I just have like some storage container here. Um, I bought a couple of these. These were at Dollar Tree. I thought they were really pretty. I have one that has stones in it. Um, and then this one's just empty. I've been doing some jar spells lately because um, I find it a lot easier just to do a like weekly jar spell than 
that I can, I'm continuing working instead of doing my candle spells that I was before. I've just kind of lost, um, lost my interest in the candle spells that I was doing. So I, I've worked, kind of redo, redone some things and this works a lot better because I'm so busy all the time with work and trying to keep a household and pets and children and all these things and I just had to w find a way to simplify um, my practice and this was a way that I did it was just to try and switch over to more jar spells than candle spells but that is just an extra storage jar I bought um, I do have a couple Um, at one of those vendor shows, I picked up these. These are resin. They're just little dishes. Um, I think this was like a shot glass. I'm not even quite sure what that was, but I got a square one that looks just like this pink one, but I thought they were pretty and I thought they would make really nice little offering bowls and stuff like that. And they have glitter in them. So, and I don't care that they're made out of, you know, a plastic material. Um, I... I'm a re resin maker myself, so I, you know, I find beauty in everything. Um, and then the last, like, regular item before I get into the books is this. I found this at Walmart. Um, it's Florida water. So, um, I've never been able to purchase a witchy item that is actually like a witchy item anywhere locally. Um, they sold, they sell this in like the African American section of like the hair products of Walmart. And I was really, really surprised to see it there. So I grabbed it. I've never used it before because I would have to order it in and trying to order liquid and, you know, actually being able to get it without it being exploded is, you know, a whole story in itself. So I grabbed it. I have not used it. I just opened it to smell it and, um, We'll see how that works. Okay, now the last things that I have are all books. So I'm going to start with these. Um, I bought this at the beginning of the year. And I know it's July already, but um, I did, bought this. These in the hopes of kind of keep track of my practice and my my um, my card readings and all of that. So this is just the Practical Witches um, 2022 Almanac. And it has like little information in it. Um, it has the calendar, you know, it has a full calendar, then it has like a little mini planner type. And in the back it has um, like information on spell work and stuff. I did not find this very helpful other than just being a planner. Um, I got it because I thought that it would give you ideas to do every month to kind of, um, kind of, you know, bring back that witchiness to my life because I've kind of been in a slump over this last year and I've been trying to find things that inspire me to be able to practice, you know, do more in my practice. And I thought this would do that, but it didn't. It just kind of gives some basic info on the back and, um, a few little things that I already knew. Uh, but you know, it works as a planner. I've been keeping track of, um, you know, just little things in it. Not, not a whole lot. And then I got this, which is just a notebook. Um, it's like a planner, uh, notebook and it's un, it's, the planner is completely, uh, undated. So what I've been doing is... Um, when I, when I do a car reading, I just write down in the, in the next slot. Um, I'm not keeping it by date. It's just, I'm using each slot as a time that I did a card reading. I don't care about what the date is. Um, so I am just writing down what I did, you know, what card, what deck I used, what cards I, um, I pulled, what the result was, you know, all of that. Um, and I'm just continuing on, you know, the next time I do a card reading will be in this slot. And it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, Thursday or not. I'm not using it as the planner portion. But I loved this book. Um, it has this really cute 
uh, pentagram here in the center and then you know it has a nice cover on it I don't like that it's matte that matte type of color that cover that everything shows but it's nice um, and I'm just keeping track and I can keep going on and on until I run out um, because I don't always I'm not always able to do um, tarot readings so to do it in a planner type of portion I would have huge sections that were uh, just empty but doing it this way when it's unmarked and I'm just using it to write it down and I feel, you know, it's it's a witchy book, so that, you know, makes me want to write down stuff in it more. Okay, on to the books. So I'm not going to go in great detail of these. I'm just going to show you. Um, I will be doing like a book flip through or book reviews when I've actually read them. But um, I haven't read them yet. At least some of them I haven't read. Okay, so this one is The Magical Household, Spells and Rituals for the Home. It's Scott Cunningham and David Harrington. And I thought that this was a book that we had purchased years ago and had gotten lost um, uh, with, you know, several moves. And it kind of had this, was called The Magical Household, and it kind of had... Um, this blue door on it, but I don't think this is the book because this is more of a beginner book. That was more of a um, spell type of book. And I don't remember who had written it or published it before. Um, so it just kind of goes through household magical spells. It's not, it's not what I thought. It just talks about making your household magic. It doesn't really give you too many ideas, at least as far as I've looked so far, um, on real, like, spell work type of stuff. Um, this one is called Thinking Indigenous, Native American Sp Spirituality for a Modern World. And this is about not it's not a Native American book. He's not teaching you how to do Native American practi practice. He's using, he's teaching you how to use where you live and who the culture that you come from um, as part of your practice. Um, I thought this would kind of be interesting to read. I have not really read it too much yet. It's just the blurb that I read when I bought it. It talks about, you know, um, turning your heritage and where you're from um, into, to integrate that into your practice. Um, so there's that one. Um, this one is Remedies for Mind, Heart, and Soul, Crystals for Healing. It's a, it's a reference book. Um, I did get this thinking that I would be working more with crystal healing and um, that kind of just came to a standstill. I, I didn't really get into it any further, but it does have, you know, like special little sections that will give you crystal correspondence is for them, like emotional trauma. Um, it gives you a couple different crystals that are good for that. Um, I didn't find that this was real helpful because a lot of the crystals that are in it are not ones that um, that I have or are accessible to me. Um, there are several that are, but um, I it'll just be something that's on my shelf. If I need it, I can pull it out. If not, it's just like a quick reference. Um, now, I cannot remember whether I showed these two or not. I'm going to go ahead and show them again. It's Not Magic, a handbook of powerful spells using witches, ladders, and other magical knots. Um, I've had this a while. I, I may have already shown it I, the, when I was doing videos before, but it kind of just goes through different types of witches, ladders. It's um, an introductory thing. It's not real extensive. Um, this one is Sigil Witchery. Um, a guide, a witch's guide to crafting magical symbols. 
Um, this one was interesting. I only got like the first chapter so far, but um, maybe a little further. I don't remember. But she talks about, you know, not just using like the word charts, but making your own symbols for things and, um, you know, just going off your artwork and doing it that way, which I think is, you know, a nice idea as well. But um, there's that one. And then this one is a Witch's Rune. How to make and use your own magical stones. Um, this is a book strictly on the Witch's Runes. And um, I had intended, and probably will still in a video, making my own set. And let's see if I can find them. But this one kind of just goes through each rune and gives you what it means, you know, and stuff like that. So I thought it would be a good reference for when I do make my own set. I can look it up and see what it what it means um, and all of that. So, so yeah. So I got the crystal the crystal Bible by Judy Hall. I do have this on my computer as a download, um, but it's just too hard to try and reference from a computer that's not on all the time. So I purchased the book. I do use this quite a bit when I'm trying to look up references and stuff. It is not as comprehensive as I would like it to be, but you know, it helps when I'm kind of in a bind and can't find the information on the internet. It's called Fiber Magic. I am a crocheter myself. I do a lot of fiber type arts. Um, I crochet, I, I machine knit, I loom knit, you know, so I thought this would be right up my alley. Um, so it's Fiber Magic, a witch's guide to spell casting with crochet, knot work, and weaving. And this hat right here just pulled me in. It's a beautiful crochet hat. But I have read all of this it, it's crafts in here are very kind of hippie-ish and not exactly the greatest work. Um, I used to teach crochet here on YouTube, not on this channel, but on a different channel. And this seems very, very beginner type stuff to me. I don't know whether she intended it to be like that or that was just her skill level. Her name is Opal Luna. Um, but the crafts in here are just are very basic and just not what I was hoping for. Um, like, like this, you're just putting, see, you're just putting, uh, beads on a piece of yarn and saying that, that you know, that's a magical tool. And she's calling it the Triple Goddess Bead of Enlightenment. It's supposed to be like a prayer bead. But I just think that's very childlike and um, not at all what I had hoped for. I mean, this was interesting. But it's just, I don't know. I expected better coming from a book. There, a book of patterns, you know. There are professional crochet books out there that have way better patterns than this and she's claiming that these have magical purposes and I don't really see that they have too much magical purposes. I bought this book for this hat, this hat right here, and that's all that I would use out of it. So, I mean these dolls are okay but I could get those anywhere and they're still very crudely done. You know, so I was very displeased with this book, um, and it was not exactly the cheapest book in the world, so I don't quite recommend that unless you just want to check it out. Um, this one is Protection Spells, <clears throat> Clear Negative Energies, Banish Unhealthy Influences, and Embrace Your Power. This and the next one are my newest books. I just got them. I haven't even had the chance to look at them yet. Um, they just came in the mail this last week. 
So this is just strictly a book on protection spells and I was really needing um, some ideas in that area right now. So it just talks about, you know, your basic circle casting, all of that stuff. Um, it goes into a little bit about specific types of magic. And then the, the part two is the spells. And this is body and spirit, so it gives you general protection stuff for that, which I think was really um, interesting that they, she broke it up in, I think it's a she. Um, it was broke up into, like, purposes. Um, so this, this whole section... So this whole section right here is nothing but spell work, which I, you know, what I, that's what I was looking for was to get ideas for spell work because my husband just started a new job. He works at a funeral home and, um, I don't want him bringing home anything that he shouldn't be bringing home, you know? So, um, I was also wanting to try and find some sort of protection spells that he could carry on him because he... It's having a real hard time with um, his energy levels when he's there. I, I don't know whether there's something there and that's just sucking everybody's energy or it's just the, the place in general. Um, it's just not a very positive place and I was hoping to find something in these books for him to maybe be able to carry on him or use in some way. But like I said, I just got them like last week and I haven't had the chance to really look at them. So there's that one. So the next book I have is the Encyclopedia of 5000 Spells, the ultimate reference guide for uh, mag the magical arts. So this book is just full of, um, of so this book is just full of spells. Um, and I like that because I can use it as a reference to make my own spells, but it gives me ideas of how to use different things and different spell work to do um, the things that I need to get done. So um, there's that one. Okay. So this one is the magic... Magic of the Celtic Gods and Goddesses, a guide to their spiritual power, healing, energies, and magical joy. So this goes through um, Celtic Gods and Goddesses. So um, I thought it was just be a nice read, and I have gotten a little ways through it, and it does have, you know, their stories and everything, so... Um, there's this one, which is Elemental Spirits. So this one, I, I'm i trying to find good references on um, just elemental magic in general. And you would think there would be lots of references out there would talk about the... Um, not just using the, the elements, but like the spirits, the land spirits that are connected to those elements. Um, I thought this book would be for that, but um, I'm not sure yet. So we'll have to see what it talks about. I have not read it yet. It does go through different types of um, spiritual beings, you know. So um, I will let you know when I read it and... I'll probably be doing book reviews on all of these, and I will definitely be doing a closer walkthrough um, um, of, of each book, but I just have to find time to be able to do it. So it does go through different um, elemental things, but it's not the book that I was thinking it was going to be. Um, also, this one is Elemental Magic. Traditional practice for walking with the energies of the natural world. And I have no idea. Um, I have not read this one yet either. So we'll have to see. So it talks about Mother Earth, mineral magics, plant magic, 
uh, magical animals and birds, power within, the magic of the land, uh, magic in action, making magical tools and ceremonies, magical food and drink, uh, precautions and remedies. So um, it should be an interesting read when I get around to reading it. Okay, and then the last few books um, I have gotten recently. Uh, this is the Tea Magic Compendium. Um, create your own brews and herbal potions while discovering grounding power of tea and witchcraft. I am a tea drinker. I do not drink coffee. Um, so I thought this would be a nice book to read. Uh, I did glance through it and was not um, um, it's alright. It it's not exactly what I thought it was. I thought it would be more of making your own type of teas. It's more of just the magic of each type of tea that you may um, be using. But it's still a good reference and um, you know it does give a few ideas for things but it's not as in-depth as I thought it was going to be. <clears throat> Um, the next one is Sigil Magic, and the next two books are on sigils. Um, as I was saying earlier, my life is so hectic that I'm trying to simplify my magic to be able to do what I need to do, but not have to go through all of this stuff to be able to do a magical spell. Sigils are a perfect way of doing that, and... Um, I've never really used sigils too much before, so I've been, I've gotten several books on sigil magic, and the last one I'm going to show you is probably the most in-depth, um, informative book on magic that I have ever had. So, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so this one's just sigil magic. Uh, it's the ultimate guide to creating magical si sigils. Wiccan sim symbols, talismans, and amulets for magical protection, witchcraft purposes, and good fortune. I haven't had the chance to look at this one really yet either. Um, it goes through... So it talks about what is a sigil, crafting words, sigils creating sigils from, mag from magic squares, um, sigil created from the wheel wheels and circles, sigils created using metric spells, creating pictorial sigils, symbols for protection and luck, um, occult and Wiccan symbols, charging and destroying sigils, uh, creative ways to use sigils, uh, making talismans and amulets, sigil crafting summary. So, um, so it has, you know, all those different sections. I have not got very far in it. And to be honest, I put the, I read this, put it down, and then I honestly don't even remember what it was about. Um, life is just so hectic. But, you know, that's another sigil book. And then this last one, I came across this video on YouTube and it was about the, uh, Mark Vincent was talking about his book. Um, and it was like a press conference type of, uh, Skype type of thing, um, to where he was talking about his book and people were, uh, were listening and then they had the chance to ask questions in the end. Well, he was talking about... Um, the subconscious and, you know, how your conscious mind kind of fight all the time. They, they, they don't always agree and, um, it just made so much sense to me. Um, and he talks about, 
how he calls the subconscious. So he calls the subconscious the mammoth and the writer is the conscious mind. So, um, the mammoth does things certain ways and then the, um, well, the, the subconscious does certain things certain ways and the, the conscious mind does things certain ways. And that's how it affects how you make magic. And I haven't gotten, um, very far, but what I've read this much and I am so inspired by him. He shows you different ways because he's also a hypnotherapist, um, as well, as well as a, um, witch or whatever he claims himself to be. But, um, the way he explains this is that the mammoth does things on instinct and he has train, you know, um, patterns and stuff that he follows, which is your subconscious. And then your conscious mind, which he calls the writer, um, does things logically and, um, can calculate and do all these other things that the subconscious can't do. But, um, creating sigils is a good way to bypass all of that, those mechanisms that you've acquired through your life that kind of tell you, well, that's never going to amount to anything. You're not going to be able to do that. All of these things that tell you no and turn it into a way that the subconscious knows because the subconscious doesn't read writing. Um, it's, it goes strictly off symbols and um, sigils are a great way to bypass all of those doubting mechanisms and use the use it as your way of doing magic. And like I said, my life is so hectic right now that, um, sigils are a great way for me to be able to do magic and accomplish the things that I need to be changing in my life without having to have all this big spiritual or big, um, spell work and, um, complication that I don't have time for. Um, so I have not got very far into this, but it has inspired me so much and um I've waited a long time for this book to come because it came from Britain um I think I waited three weeks two three weeks for it to come and it actually came early um and then I started reading it right away because I knew I was going to like it because I watched uh that video um talking about him talking about this book and how he sees making sigils and sigil magic and all of that if I remember, I will try and find the link for that and link it in the description box. If not, um, but I will try. Uh, that is my last thing. Um, definitely out of everything, I suggest you check out this one if you um, are interested in sigil magic at all. And I, um, I will leave it there. And... Um, stay tuned for future videos because I will be trying to get back on my weekly schedule of filming and we will doing, be doing, I'm going to be doing things a little bit different now. Um, I'm going to be doing not only spell work and, you know, informational stuff, but I am going to be doing like more artsy craftsy stuff that have to do with, uh, magical practice. Like I was, you know, like all the supplies that I got. Um, and we may just do crafty stuff just because. Um, so I will let you go and blessed be.